This is a sad video, this one. Um, I'm wearing a Devils jersey because uh, I think for all the hockey franchises, Emmerich will be most known being a play-by-play -play for the Devils. Um, yeah, a little bit less energy. I'll probably jump cut a little bit less in this video as well. So Doc Emmerich has retired. And there might be a few people shocked to, to know that that hit someone in Australia or that he meant someone to someone in Australia uh, this much. And there's a fair few of us in, in our in our group chat that were so disappointed to know that, that we may have heard the last game that he's called. You know, he may come back for a guest bundle. Uh, and maybe if COVID, you know, stops, he may come out of retirement. But, uh, yeah, Doc Emmerich is a huge part of why I am a hockey fan. He was part of that whole generation of me growing up, uh, listening to Devil's Games, because Devil Games got a lot of airtime here. Um, the way it worked in Australia was I, I started watching games on mute in the morning when my dad or my mum, both of them could have worked a night shift on a Saturday morning. So cartoons were out of the question and the only sport on was this weird sport on ESPN. I think Gary Thorne probably would have been commentating those, but I, I wouldn't be able to hear that. Um, I became a Penguins fan just because they were on the most. They just came off two cup wins, um, so it made sense. Then we didn't really get a lot of games for a while till uh, NBC kind of got the agreement uh, with the NHL. And then we got the Wednesday rivalry nights and those sort of things. So hockey really became a big part of my life again in the, in the you know, just after that lockout, I would say. I mean, I kept all up to date with it through magazines and everything like that. But yeah, it was just after the lockout and there was Doc and... When he was really the big, consistent part of me falling in love with this sport. And it's not because of him. It's just he was there for all those moments that I look back on. And it's so sad to see him go. And completely understandable. The guy's like 74. He's commentated almost 4,000 games, including the Olympics. Um... I don't think you'd have much more to achieve or do in the sport, but it's just my hockey watching, which is especially with the, the internet coming in, you know, and, and being able to watch all these games online on NHL.TV, meant that I could watch a lot of games. And when he, whenever he commentated it, the passion came through and it always just resonated with me and his little stories and his little quips and everything there, it really did hit home for me. Um, and I enjoyed it so much. Uh, our favorite thing was whenever he said, uh, hit the post with the shot or it didn't go. Uh, the group chat always lights up when that happens. Just like, oh, he said the thing, or it'd just be all caps, hit the post with the shot. Like, uh, yeah. And like, it's just, it's just sad. It's just sad. Like, I, 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 what a, what a career, what a, I really hope that he had left his mark on, on more people like me as well. I think there's a lot of people that will attribute being a fan or diving straight in because of Doc's just passion for the game. It was it was infectious. It came through the TV to me. And there are some people, you know, I don't want the whole comment down below, oh, he's not as good as this person. It's not about that. For me, I couldn't watch a lot of the Canadian guys, so I, I, I don't have that connection with them until very recently. Um, I just don't. I just don't. And, and I'm not saying they're worse than anyone. I'm not saying they're better than anyone. I, I really don't want that discussion. But yeah, like the three cup wins for the Penguins that, uh, I mean, one I watched in a pub in England at 4 a.m. in the morning because we were there. Like, I, I didn't think the Penguins would, would go all the way in the first year they won, like, won, the, won their back-to-back. -back. And there was an England a chance to go to England with my girlfriend and so yeah we're at a pub blitzed off our minds and there was Doc Emmerich blaring through uh, the next year um, yeah it would have been what noon it would have been roughly noon starting to crack open the first beer and the first cup I just finished my exams I just finished my exams uh, my last one my last ever one in 2008 when they won that cup and I came out and I missed the first period. Oh, I remember this. I missed the first period. And um, and then Talbot, I think I, I, I missed the first goal as well. And then Talbot scored the second. 
and then just his call when Flory's diving over to make that save. I remember just being on pins and needles. I was, wa yeah, just watching at a sports bar in the city. I couldn't get there quick enough to go watch this game. And, um... The gold medal games, of course, like obviously, I, you know, being Australian, I, I didn't really have a foot in the race there, but I mean, that was just such good hockey and it was such a compelling story when um, Parise tied it up at the end in that first gold medal game. Yeah, and he was just there. He was there for all those moments. And he was also there for the bad moments too. I remember Bergeron, Bergeron scoring against the uh, Penguins in double overtime game four when... The, oh, maybe that was game three. No, I think it was game three to put the dagger in because game four, again, I had a shot very late. But I remember his call on that. Um, yeah, that one hurt. That one was that stung. Haglin eliminating the Penguins as well. But, yeah, like that Benino call and just like it's over. Like it was, it was so good. There's so many moments that I just... He's just there and you kind of forget a little bit that he's in the background, but I remember being excited for Penguins games that Doc was calling. Especially when like Stuggerwald and, and whatnot were the commentators uh, for the Penguins. It was such a good reprieve and, and a break up from, from the Homer guys. And you just got these stories from him and and for someone that, like, especially before the internet was so big and you and you, you didn't hear any of this stuff in Australia. The only reason I got, the, like, these little bit hockey tidbits and these little stories, which you guys may know a thousand times, may have heard these stories a thousand times, but whenever he said them, it was so new to me that I would just, I would just gobble it up. It was just hockey information. And, um, and it's a big reason why I'm in the, doing this now. Like, I know I don't have the biggest YouTube channel in the world and... But I do love doing this, and I do love covering hockey, and I do love watching it. And a lot of it had to do with that start when I could watch it, was just seeing this infectious human being come through the TV. And, uh, yeah. So I just really wanted to make a video on that. I mean, it's not like he's going to watch this or anything. <laughs> um, I think the other thing was, in sports broadcasting, there's a point where you where the broadcaster sometimes becomes bigger than the game or thinks they're bigger than the game or has a bit of ego that they don't need to research it anymore and they can get by. Doc was never that guy. He was always talking to people. He was always, he had his little notebook with facts and whenever there was a small milestone, he knew it. Like, oh, that's the 50th assist and he just knew it. And very rarely did he get players wrong or mix them up, which is, as someone who live streams a lot of games in his playoffs, um, here, or I'll live stream my reactions. The amount of times that I said someone scored and then went, oh wait, no it wasn't, I just saw the, his, his actual number, um, it would have been so difficult. And bear in mind, it would be a little bit easier to watch it all from, from up top and, not, and, and have TV screens and not have to just go with where NBC is looking at that time. But yeah, wow, what a, what a career. What a career that this guy had, like, I mean, calling the Devil Cups and just being a part of the Devils when they were at the height of their powers. But yeah, um, just an infectious human being for for his love of a game. And, and, and people definitely going to have their qualms with him or, or say they didn't like him. But the one thing that you can't say is that he didn't love the sport of hockey. And I think that he left it in a better position than when he started it, uh, when he started. And, um... Yeah, and just imagine trying to work with Pierre nonstop. Like, that would be... <laughs> I mean, that's just... That's hard in itself. Uh, no, I, I joke. I don't, I don't mind Pierre most of the time. Um, yeah. Yeah, what a, what a career. Like, just a... Just a really... What seemed like a really good dude. I, I really regret never having a chance to meet him. I, I met, got to meet a, a fair few sort of the NBC personalities. You know, I'd, I'd kind of get a rough idea of what hotel they were staying at, um, a little bit stalkerish, and then I'd see them. But I never I never saw Doc. I never saw Doc. Uh, met Pierre, actually. He's a nice... He was a nice dude. He was, he was fine. I, I just... Because I never want to be that guy that comes up and is like, hey, and, and really start a conversation. I just say, like, hey, you know, I love your work. That, and then I try to end the conversation there. But, um, yeah, Pierre, like, wanted to chat about stuff for a while. I think the Australian accent, like, gets people kind of interested. They're just like, well, how do you know this thing? Like, it's, yeah. So I, I do think, um, 
yeah. Anyway, it's, it just sucks. I'll never. I'll, I'll probably never meet him. So that that kind of sucks. But all the best. Hope he enjoys retirements with the dogs and his partner. <laughs> um, yeah, to be curious. I, I reckon it'd be a, a, a big adjustment to go from like day to day, like you are on the hockey gr band, dr the hockey grind, especially in playoffs. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you just want a slower life, and, and I feel like that. That's uh, that's pretty much it for him. Um, but yeah, hopefully he comes back for some guest appearances or does some things because. Yeah, I would, I would like to see him still around the game a little bit. Um, maybe do the odd, like, cold open for a few, like, big games. I think that would be cool. These cold opens are the best. Like, they're just so good. They just get you into it. But, uh, yeah. But, yeah, I'll leave you with uh, what I think my favorite call looking back of uh, Doc. And it wasn't a goal, it wasn't, you know, that Flory making a save. It was game six uh, against the Red Wings, the year that they won the cup, not the year they lost. We won't talk about that game six. And it was the face-off, and I remember it was an earlier game, I think it was a day game, because um, I had to watch it really early in the morning. I, I, I can't remember when, but I, for some reason I got in my mind it was 5 a.m. For some reason in, in my mind. I could be wrong with that. I mean, it was, you know, 12 years ago now. And Doc said, how many more of these? None or one? And I was so hooked on that game from that point. For some reason, him saying that, I was like, one. One. I just knew everything would be okay. And then Jordan Stahl score. Like, it just... Yeah, I, I knew that everything would be okay. And there was that mad net scramble in that game, too. And he called that. And he was like, oh, my. And he just... Oh. But definitely, it was how many more of these? None or one. And I still quote that at a game six to this day. I think that was my favorite call of his. That was just so, it was so nothing. And that was his gift. It was that he would make nothing, a face off of a game six and he would have a, a, a great one line that would sum it all up and add to it at the same time. And he was so good at doing that. Uh, yeah. Anyway, guys, I'm not going to do my usual stuff where I say like and subscribe and all that stuff at the end of this video. I just don't, don't feel it's right here. I just really wanted to make, like, a, I don't know, an appreciation video for him because, like I said, he 100% was a huge part of me being a hockey fan uh, to the level that I am. I think I always would have been a hockey fan, but to the level of I am that it's almost tragic. Um... He's a huge part of that, and it's his storytelling that, that allowed this guy who, well, lived in Perth, at the Canberra in Perth, to know stories of the game that weren't available when, you know, the internet made weird noises when you wanted to start it, and you had 100 hours, <laughs> you had hour caps and data caps, and and the thing went, no, 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 you couldn't find out his information, but, you know, he just would tell the story of a game that happened 20 years ago and I, you know, now it'd be like a moment in infamy that I would know off the back of my head, but back when you knew nothing about the game, getting that history from him, it was like an encyclopedia for me, so yeah. So yeah, I, I hope this video wasn't too boring, I, I think I, I just had a bit of a unique relationship, I guess, without him ever knowing I exist, um, with Doc Emmerich, and um, yeah, best of luck. Best of luck in your retirement. 100% earned it. Um, yeah, I hope I do get a meeting one day. I really do. I really hope that... I mean, that's probably the one person I want to meet. Shake his hand and just... Have him tell me a tale. <laughs> like, purely selfish. There's nothing I can give him. <laughs> it would be the most selfish thing in the world. I would just be like... Yeah, give me, give me something. But yeah. I mean, you look at like... Yeah, anyway, that's the, I could, I could go, uh, this video could go on for, for an hour of me giving an example, so I'll cut it off there. Uh, if somehow Doc ends up watching this, which I, he won't, but just thank you. Um, even if it goes to, if no one watches this, I feel like just thank you. Um, for everything that you contributed to my hockey education and just, USA Hockey as a whole. Um, I can't really talk too much about USA Hockey just not being there, but I know he meant a huge part to it. Um, and yeah. I'd be curious if he would like go back to being 
a, fa- a fan of a team or I, I mean I definitely know that he likes certain players and he likes stories of the players so I think he's got a lot to follow going forward anyway guys thank you so much for watching this uh, comment down below of your favourite uh, Doc Emmerich moments and um, yeah thank you so much have a great day see you and bye